it was an old play like about plantations during the times of slavery. And so um, Octoroon for being one eighth black. Exactly. Um, Octoroon was one quarter uh, white. You know, so there was a rewrite of it, a great playwright in two thousand and fourteen, who premiered in London, and they rewrote the play in a brilliant way. That the main character is both black and white, and he fights himself on the stage, like he actually fights himself. So they had to make a wig that was two parts. Um, so it's actually two wigs sewn together. But it, it, it's really good. We revisited Tartuffe as well, um, another great old play that would have, the language would have been outdated, and we put that on last year, and now the costumes were amazing. But it's to rewrite, and Frank McGuinness rewrote that, so as to be able to think about identity and the place of old writing and how we reinterpret that and reimagine it to be more inclusive of society and to take, to make a play on these old writings as well. So, so it was quite a good one. Um, the, the main female character in it is trying to impress the lead and she starts off quite modest and she has like, she has plaits, right? And then she goes off and her dress gets a bit bigger and then she has a bun and then her dress gets a bit bigger and she has plaits a bun and then she has like a bow. So <laughs> this is her headpiece and it, it actually extended. Her costume got so big she couldn't quite fit in onto the set. So, you know, there is some things that require a particular thing, but I suppose people like Val Sherlock wouldn't often get a mention in reviews and if nobody's saying anything, bad, anything about the hair, that's a good thing. You know, some things you wanted to blend in and not be noticed, so it's a kind of a good thing. The other thing is just, for every show, the actors get a photograph of the set. So there's some beautiful sets I, I quite like. This is Tartuffe, so you can imagine the costumes. Now they use flamboyant colors, but really, like, the, the fun was had. Now we had to get a few other makers in, apart from lovely Tara, because we had a lot of costumes. And it also went on tour. So, can you see that down there? Do you want to pass it down? That I ever can see? Where's our camera? You losing? Know, you went to see ghosts, did you? Yeah, I'm to. Um, oh, we're brilliant. Yeah. Um, and it's just the capacity of set design, really. Mm -hmm. It's lovely to be able to show how the light, visuals, um, projections, and also the craftsmanship and the props room, how they really combine together. And this is kind of towards the end of the show in the evening light. And they use a, like, daylight is a blue gel, actually, in the lights. And this is our current production. We'll have a little look at that. The, the one that I suppose was beautiful was specifically written about Alzheimer's for a great Irish actor called Brian Murray. And it was in our Peacock Theatre. Now, Brian Murray has Alzheimer's and they wrote the show for him. And some days he would forget everything that went before. So can you imagine the directors and the writers? And his wife said, it didn't matter, it didn't frighten him that he didn't remember anything that went before because his favorite place to come to was the Abbey Theater. So every day she'd say, where are we going? We're going to the Abbey. So, I mean, it's, he was an icon in Irish, on Irish TV as well, but the set, it had many of his other selves, so younger selves, so it was kind of like a rotation, so you could look into his other selves. So really beautiful design, uh, really. And like just brilliant. And it was open to people with Alzheimer's as well. So it was a, a non-silent um, audience. You didn't have to be quiet, which, you know, there are huge challenges to make in theater and to allow that freedom that anything can happen on the night. <laughs> Um, so you can have a little look, I'll head out this way.